Hello there, my name is Miss Red Nebula, and welcome back to Planet Zoo. And... the cute... <laughs> so, I've been playing around with wild dogs here. First off, I wanted to just say that, um... It, <laughs> here, let me put this in pause mode just in case something massively goes wrong as it keeps seeming to want to do whenever I try to uh, get distracted and talk about something. So, I jumped into franchise mode. And I've been kind of just poking around, playing around, seeing if I can figure out how to make things work the way I want to, reporting any kind of bugs that I find to Frontier. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll leave a link down in the description for where to go if you have any kind of bugs that you want to report. I mean, telling me on YouTube is all well and good, but I don't work for Frontier, and I'm not even on the same continent as them, so it doesn't really help to tell me this stuff. Although, if you just want to rant, go for it. I've got plenty of things that I want to rant about, but <laughs> there's lots of things that I absolutely love too, so it is it is what it is. It's a beta, it's going to have some issues, but it's also got a heck of a lot of really cool gameplay. So I wanted to briefly show you guys around the sort of beginning little zoo thing that I created. Um, kind of got my confidence up after watching Delay Designer's really, really great intro to the franchise mode and basically just giving tips and tricks and pointers for how to get franchise mode going and actually get a bit of a profit going. So I'm actually making a, a reasonable amount of money. And profits are up. We've got about 64000 a bit over now, and that's with four main exhibits and a couple of small animal exhibits. Now, None of this is particularly meant to be pretty. <laughs> I'm just figuring out what the heck that I'm doing. Even things like what's the size of the enclosure need to be is still a little bit mysterious. Like, you go in the Zoopedia and you go and look up a particular animal, right? You go over to their habitat and it tells you minimum habitat requirements and this number here. So I started making enclosures based on that number there. And then, like, this one's water, this one's climbable, but I don't have any climbing ones yet. Also talks about grades of fencing, but I think some of this is not fully implemented yet, because I couldn't find anything on the individual fences about what grade they were meant to be. Eh. But in any case, so this number's not necessarily what you want to look at. And here's where it gets really tricky, because it has to do with how many animals are in the exhibit, but it doesn't just double this number every time you add an animal. It seems to depend on the animals. Like for the hippos, when, let's see, hippopotamus, when I went to, um, it's because it's like, okay, this is 1,004 meters squared of land and 1,004 meters squared of water. Okay, cool. So I made that and then put three hippos in and immediately got this error saying, oh my gosh, you don't have enough space for these hippos. And I checked and it was like, 2008, but that was for three hippos. So the first one added half again the size, and then the second one added that yet again. A third one went in, and they didn't even add that much. So each successive animal doesn't necessarily double it, or definitely doesn't double it, but doesn't even necessarily add the same amount. It's a little bit weird, but I think some of this stuff is things that we're all, as players, going to have to figure out. What exactly do we do with this information? But here's where it also gets fun, is that same number schema doesn't work for other animals. The hippos add 1,004, and then the second hippo required 502, third hippo another 502. But when I was doing tapers, it wasn't half again, it was a different number, and then I did the African wild dogs, a different number yet again. So, even just figuring out how big the habitats need to be is a little bit tricky. When you start in on franchise mode, make sure you give yourself lots of room to branch out, because the hippo enclosure, which started out like right about here, ended up having all of this extra space added onto it. So I've been experimenting with all of the different things that you can do, like for the hippo enclosure it does have an underwater viewing area, which works pretty well when there's hippos around. I'm gonna make sure that all of the water treatment is working, and since this one seems to be buggy as heck and keeps... Well, not buggy in terms of gameplay, but buggy in terms of it just keeps breaking down, I just added a second one, because why the heck not? I've got over here my tapers. 
Is it taper or tapier? In any case, these guys are trouble. For some reason, their enclosure is the one that I've been having the most problems with. It gets dirty really easily. I have keepers coming as often as I can and I call them otherwise. And then this is the one where I've also been getting that bug where the keepers just don't always feed these poor little beasts. So everything's working quite well at the moment, but who knows if that's going to remain the case. These were my little babies. And if that's not just the most darling thing, I don't know what it is. It's like every time I start getting frustrated with this game, I just zoom in on one of the little teeny ticky baby little babies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every time that I start getting frustrated with the game, I just look really close at the models and am completely blown away all over again. So these guys are darling. I actually really like tapers in the real world. So these, this was the second animal that I put in. The first were these Galapagos tortoises, because that was what I could afford at the time. I love them too. The movements on these guys is just phenomenal. They're so plodding and... and... ah... they're just perfect. I haven't been able to breed these guys just yet, but that's probably okay. So they don't have a very big enclosure, and this was one of the lady's suggestions was that for your tortoises, don't make it too big, otherwise they're they're gonna starve to death before they get to the food. And haven't had any real problems with them, knock on wood. I did end up um, building this as their as their hard shelter. It basically has roof pieces embedded inside of it, and I haven't quite gone back to fix this and make it look a little bit prettier. But by doing that excuse me, fence, by doing that. It allows you to know for sure that you've got enough hard shelter in the habitat. And it seems to be that the hard shelter requirement has to do with the size of the habitat. Because for the tapers, I had one that was um, 8 meters by 8 meters, and then I made their habitat a little bit bigger. And it suddenly wasn't enough anymore, so I had to make it a bit bigger here. What you can see that I've done is just when starting out, and here's a tip, um, is just when starting out a new habitat is just make some roof pieces, and make them until the habitat says, yeah, that's cool, that's enough. And you can tell that if you look at the individual animal. Your nutrition's down, why is that? Oh, quality of meals. I need to get my, uh, my research up on these guys. But in any case, so you can tell about the amount of... Ah, it's this one. The hard shelter by looking at an animal and seeing what it says under the welfare hard shelter. So this is plenty for them. I'm just going to build something nice over top of this. Right now you can see I've got five animals in this enclosure and it's getting pretty close to the, to the limit of how many animals I can have in here. But these guys I wanted to have in here so I could breed them. This is my first little baby. And then I mentioned the hippos. But here's the hippos again. It's one of my one of my baby hippos. Still a juvenile, but coming up on coming up on adulthood, I believe, finally. And poor keeper having to deal with hippo poop. <laughs> the fact that the hippos actually Oh, well thank you. <clears throat> that just <laughs> That's realism for you. I, I love that the hippos actually do that because that's exactly what they do normally. Don't stick your face through the wall. Look at you play though. He's, he's like growling at it. Oh, you guys are too cool. And people love the hippos. Love the way that they walk along the bottom like they're supposed to. Just gorgeous. And then I've just got a couple of a couple of reptile things going on. Well, sorry, one one reptile and, and one arachnid. Got my snakes in here, who are now on contraceptives because holy crud do these guys like to breed. Boa constrictor, and there's another one in here somewhere. Oh. Going right up there. Found out pretty quick that for these that you have to make sure that you get a vet starting researching on them very quickly because their environment layout requires all of this enrichment stuff. If you don't have that, the animals you put in there will almost immediately start to have a low welfare. 
So this stuff, just get on researching as quick as you can, just like when you get the other animals and you need to research to give them their enrichment items. You'll notice you've got no enrichment items when you first start franchise mode. So the sooner you can get that started, the better off you'll be. You only need one from each category to give them 100% suitability, but you can put in as many as you want. Doesn't seem to bother them at all. And I don't think it makes a difference on the price either. There is a Goliath bird eater in here somewhere. And I have no idea where... Ah, oh, there you are! I love spiders! Yeah, but my, my breeding fun for the boas is that I put them in and almost... <clears throat> I mean, almost instantaneously, I had a baby boa. Which meant that because they only want two in their habitat, immediately they were like, Oh, so social problems, we're, we're way too full up in here, this is no good. So I had to very quickly so, sort of put everybody on contraceptives and sort out. I, I eventually ended up just putting the third one in here, and he's going to be released into the wild as soon as he gets old enough. So, what? Oh, there you are. There you are. That's Diego. He's a cutie. I, I just love that, how it's all noisy out here, but as soon as you go in the enclosure, you can't hear it anymore. I mean, you can, but just it, but it's way muted. So that's really neat. A couple other things to note is that I did not have people start using my food and drink places until I built the hippo's enclosure over here. So it seems like maybe it was just too far away from this main path, or maybe people just, I guess, weren't happy enough to go and start using it or something? I don't know. So they're using it now, and that's all well and good. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do just a time lapse of m kind of making the uh, making the enclosure for these guys a little bit better. Did did you seriously? Okay, wait. Now, where did I get another pup from? Where did you come from? Oh, hello. I've got two puppies in here now. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just got very excited over puppies. That's gonna happen a lot. In any case, so I'm going to be like, like dressing up this exhibit, and this is since I've since I've got you can see now the money's gone up to uh, almost 73k now. So I've got a reasonable amount of money to be getting on with, and I can really build up this exhibit and start doing some creative stuff instead of just like doing everything as functional as possible. This seems like it's really, really good once it, once everything starts working and functioning properly and all, all the animals are, are happy or as, at least as happy as you can keep them. Except for you tapers who are a pain in the butt. <laughs> right, so I'm going to get some research done on these guys and then we're going to make this exhibit pretty. That's pretty much it for what I've got at the moment. I'm kind of just throwing things together and figuring stuff out as in the time that we have the beta for. I did, again, kind of go by Delady's ideas that where you have a sort of centralized hub where all of your keeper stuff is. Of course, if you turn on down here in the bottom left-hand corner is where you've got the, the nice little heat maps for everything. Like that's the water heat map and hmm, they're starting to starting to go maybe a little bit in temperature and all of that, but the important one for here is negative impact on guests. So you can see how, at what point you have guests starting to be upset that they can see buildings. And oops, I've got some stuff happening here. And a guest that's stuck, you dummy. Okay, and then I've got another section over here where uh, I built this up for the African wild dogs. Who was pregnant? Okay, that's a bug, because sometimes the Zoopedia opens when you try to open the timeline. One of my hippos is breakers! Yay! Good, because the other little baby is about to be old enough that they can move on. In any case, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can see here in the heat maps, and that's really cool. And also the fact that you can assign work rosters, and the work roster thing is just built very nicely. Like, here's the, the work zones. Let's just edit one. And then you can see where if you have something that's in the work zone, if you've got something that's in the work zone but shared between a couple of work zones, that's when it comes up in blue. Items that aren't in anybody's work zones are in red, and items that are in another work zone but not this one are yellow. So this is just the work zone 
for the for these small animals and it shares like the veterinary stuff and the staff building and then one of the keeper huts although i don't i haven't been able to tell so far whether the small animals actually make use of the keeper huts or not all right so i think that's it for this one um, feel free to like or comment and if you want random updates from my little world of art and gaming subscribe if you enjoy what I do and are interested in supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. A big thank you to my current patrons. That's all for now. Bye!